What is going on everyone? Platinum Beast coming at you with yet another video. Today we're going to be discussing Platinum Stackers versus Collectors. How they're different, what the difference is, which one you should be or not be, and things of that nature. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay guys, so as you can see here before us today, I have a wide variety of platinum pieces in front of me. And today what we're going to specifically talk about is being a platinum collector versus a platinum stacker. Now what's the difference? Is there a difference? What's the point? Does it even matter? All that kind of stuff. So, first and foremost, if you wouldn't mind doing me a huge favor and hitting that like button down below, that really helps out my channel a whole lot. It helps get this video out to many more people and things of that nature. Also, leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts on this video once it has completed, and I will try to respond to them in a timely manner. So, Platinum Collectors versus Platinum Stackers. What's the difference and does it matter, and things of that nature? So, a Platinum Collector, I would assume, and I would classify as someone who purchases Platinum with the intent of collecting more so than stacking. Now, what is stacking? Stacking is, for many people, wealth preservation. Stacking is what they do to preserve their wealth, to preserve the buying power of their dollar, whichever country they are in. And so, <clears throat> platinum can be seen in the same sense as gold and silver in that manner. Now, a lot of people do not see it that way, and that is okay, but platinum has proven that it does go up in time with inflation. It does move at the rate of inflation to an extent. And so platinum can be good for wealth preservation and people can stack the metal. Now many stackers are gonna focus more on overall weight than they are collectability. So they might buy something like a generic platinum bar. Now this is a one gram bar and it has a premium attached to it that is higher than most pieces of platinum. However, this is a stacking piece, right? There's nothing really special about this bar. It's just your average one gram bar. Now it is a Pamp Suisse, so it does have a tiny bit more premium than some of the other things like Volcambi and whatnot. However, this is just generally speaking, a generic bar. Now, if you take a look at this one ounce Platinum Queen's Beast, this is a limited run coin. Now, what do I mean by limited run? Well, it doesn't have a limited mintage. The, the Royal Mint does not put out mint numbers. They do not limit this to any specific number. They will sell as many of these as they can, but they will not sell them forever. So that is why I classify this coin as a limited run coin. Now, limited run coins are great because when they first get released, you can usually find them for reasonable premiums, such as this Platinum Horse that I got for a reasonable premium, closer to spot than some other pieces that you could find if you wanted to. However, there is a high likelihood that this coin will become collectible at some point in the future because it will no longer be being made and people will still want to get their hands on this coin as well as the rest of the Queen's Beast series. So this is the way I like to go about stacking my platinum is I like to purchase pieces around the time when they come out because especially limited run coins such as this because the potential for it to become collectible in the future is very, very high. Because they only make this for a certain amount of time, that means there will be only a certain amount of coins out there. They will not make this forever. And so if I can get it at a decent premium right when it comes out, I'll pick it up. The same thing goes for Platinum Eagles. Everyone knows that if you try to get a backdate Platinum Eagle, it's going to cost you more than a current date Platinum Eagle. This is very different than gold and silver in that gold and silver is typically cheaper if you buy the random date. However, if you buy a random date of platinum, it's going to cost you a little bit more because the Platinum Eagle is a little bit more collectible than the other Eagle series in the US Mint coin series. Now this is a half ounce Platinum Eagle and they no longer make half ounce Eagles and it has a mint date of 2008 which is a fairly decent date, but I picked up a random date and they sent me this. So that was definitely a bonus. You also have very small pieces like this, Platinum Philharmonic, which carry a little bit heftier premium. However, because they are so small and they are limited, limited mintage, 
well, I say limited mintage, they don't actually have a mint limit. However, they don't mint very many. They don't mint nearly as many of these as they do say one ounce platinum coins. And so these become collectible over time as well. If you try to get a back date, one twenty-fifth ounce Philharmonic, you're gonna pay a quite a bit more premium than you would on a current date Platinum Philharmonic. This coin can be had for about 70 bucks. If you try to get a backdate one, it's gonna be about 100 bucks. So it goes up in value because there's people out there that want it. Now, the thing with Platinum collectability is if you are buying coins that are collectible, you will have to wait in the secondhand market for specific people who want to buy your specific piece. Whereas if you go the generic route with these generic bars, you will just list your platinum for a little bit over spot and probably it will sell, but you won't have to wait as long because there are way more people buying platinum simply just to buy platinum than there are buying specific collectible pieces. So there's pros and cons to both platinum stacking and platinum collecting, but I like to mix both in there. Like I said, I like to get these Queen's Beasts when they first come out. There's a lot of new series coming out, such as the Queen's Virtue series. Great series to get in on. There's also the Platinum Lunar series that just started a couple years back, and you can get in on that and pick up those coins for reasonable premiums as they come out. Occasionally, there will also be Platinum collectible bars, such as this Platinum Pamp Suisse Rosa. This does actually have a limited mintage. I believe it's about 1,000 bars. So there's, there, there's only a thousand of these out there in existence with the rose on it. And I picked this up for a decent premium uh, while it was fresh on the market. And so could that become collectible in the future? Well, it very well could be. And I could end up getting a better premium on this than say a generic bar. Now here's the thing. Let's say that this Platinum Rosa when it first came out, cost $5 more than this generic Credit Suisse. Now, I'm most people want to dollar cost average and get platinum for as low as possible. So you want to go with the Credit Suisse, right? Well, if you just pony up that extra five bucks or whatever the extra is on the Rosa, you could end up adding even more premium down the line once you sell it for its collectability. The Credit Suisse will just hold its premium, whereas the Rosa has potential to increase in premium. Now, the Rosa will also hold its premium, right? And so if you wanted to sell these for the same price, you probably could. This one will probably sell before this one, just given its uniqueness. However, if you bought this when it first came out, you probably didn't pay much more than this, and this has potential to increase in value even more. Now, one downside to being a platinum collector versus a stacker I want to mention is when you go to sell, if you have a collectible piece such as the Rosa Bar, such as a Backdate Queen's Beast, or what have you, you're going to want to get that extra premium based upon the collectability. You're going to want it. In your mind and just your thinking, you're going to say, hey, what I have is rare and unique. I don't want to give it up for low premium, right? Well, if it really boils down to it, say you get into a bind in life, whether it's a medical emergency, whether it's a family emergency, whatever emergency or, or, or situation you are in life that you want to get out of precious metals, selling the collectible pieces and wanting to get that extra premium out might take some time and it might boil down to time you don't have. Now this is again a pro in getting the collectible stuff when it first comes out. That way if you do end up having to sell it close to spot or for just a little bit of premium or the same premium as say a Maple Leaf or a Philharmonic or something, you at least you won't have lost any money. You will have missed out on being able to recoup some of that collectible premium, but you won't have lost any money if you purchased it when it first came out. Now, if you try to buy a backdate Queen's Bees right now, you might pay a hundred bucks more than the horse. Say you find a griffin, say you find a dragon, a unicorn, something like that, you're probably gonna pay a hundred dollars more for that coin than you would this coin, the brand new horse. Now, if you go that route, then I highly suggest having a sort of back stock of, you know, just generic stacking platinum that you can go through first, right? And this is why I like to diversify between collecting and stacking is I have stuff I can sell before I ever get into the more collectible stuff, right? So if there ever is an emergency, I have stuff I can sell and hold on to my collectible stuff for the foreseeable future. Now, if I needed to get rid of all of it, I could, but 
at least I have a little bit of both. And that's why it's really kind of good to get into both. Whether you're a stacker or a collector, you know, it doesn't hurt to pick up collectible pieces when they first come out because the premiums are so close. It also doesn't hurt to continuously add generic stuff to your stack because if the time ever comes where you need to sell, not you want to sell, but you need to, you can sell through that generic stuff before you ever get into the collectability stuff. So that's what I have for you today, guys. The differences on Platinum Stackers and Platinum Collectors. There's definitely some differences to be had, but I kind of think it's good to kind of position yourself into both aspects of the stacking of Platinum. I appreciate everyone for stopping by and checking out my video today. Be sure to hit that like button down below so that you can stay up to date with future videos and be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave me a comment in the comment section down below as well, letting me know your thoughts and opinions. Do you stack platinum? Do you collect platinum? Do you do a little bit of both? Do you not even have any platinum? That's okay too. I'm just glad you came by and decided to support my channel. So with all that being said guys, until next time, we will see ya.